Viv, Beth, thank you very much for joining us here at the Arsenal training ground. I mean, you did a lot of filming over the last 12 months or so, a lot of recovering, a lot of rehabilitation. Let's just talk us through the documentary and the reasons behind why, Beth, you first, that you wanted to do something like that. Yeah, I think we um, felt important to kind of share our journey, um, make everyone a little bit more aware of what that journey looks like. Um, if we could kind of figure out a little bit to why it's happening or factors that go towards it happening or is there anything that we can do within the game uh, to prevent it or at least minimise the risk of ACL injuries. Obviously, there's been quite a pandemic at the moment of in this uh, specific injury. So I think we owed it, and I think Viv said it earlier today, that we owed it to the next generation to try and figure out a better solution, a better plan that can minimise the risk of this nasty and not the nicest injury. I think the one thing that blew my mind, Viv, was in the documentary you were talking about how when boys join academies eight years old, the strength and conditioning, that side of football is there and available to them. As far as the girls are concerned in academies, that doesn't come to around about 18. That's, that's nine years difference. I mean, obviously, yeah, we discussed that, like, it could be one of the reasons that plays into um, a lot of women doing their ACL. But I also think if you, if you look at our generation, like, I started playing professional when I was 15, um, in 2010 at that moment, played national team from 2013. So although I was still really, really young, I already played at a professional level. Um, I think, as Beth just said, like, one of the reasons that we wanted to do this documentary is to make sure that the next generation isn't going to be scared of doing their ACL, is going to get the help they need. Um, and part of that is youth academies. And I think in women's football, that is probably the next big step that we need to make because we need to get the, like, the girls ready to come into professional football. And yeah, so far, that's obviously not been a priority but I think that should be on top of the list right now. I would say almost every season you've seen an ACL happening around you. Um, I think it's always something in the back of your mind that you know it is happening in women's football, it's happening in football, in, in any sport really. So yeah, you are at the risk of having an injury, but I have never thought about actually doing my ACL myself. You said when you did yours, you knew you'd done it straight away. I think you were trying to convince yourself that you hadn't. So what was the reaction when you realised what you had done. Yeah, obviously when I did it, I had the pain. Not one I was ever used to before, but I think it lasted 30 seconds to a minute. And then I obviously walked off and thought, oh, it doesn't feel too bad, not un like too unstable, nothing like that. And me being the positive person that I am, still was like, oh, maybe I've got away with it. Maybe it's not the dreaded ACL. Got the scan the next day, 20 minutes, li literally after my um, scan got told, yeah, ACL um, rupture. So I hadn't got away with it, even though, yeah, I can understand, I think that's from a perspective of doing it now and experiencing it, why people come back on the pitch. Because I was off the pitch, so the sub was made, so I, that was taken away from me. But I think if I was on the pitch and had the time to think about it and settle, I may have come back on and done more damage to it. The interview that you did when you did your ACL and you were sitting in the medical room on the bed, just the pair of you together, sort of probably looking around a room and, and it was just like, what the hell have we done here? <laughs> and I think the words were putting it politely, we've both messed up. Was that just the immediate emotion of it all when, when you did yours? Yeah, I think it was a bit of disbelief, to be honest. Like, obviously, I'd been taking care of Beth for about two weeks after surgery. Um, and yeah, just heading into the game, you were like, it's almost winter break, gonna drive home, Beth home for Christmas. Um, just need to get through tonight, really. That obviously didn't end up that well, but um, I think coming back in a changing room, like we were sitting there, obviously waiting for the game to be finished, and then yeah, we were just sitting there. All the girls came in, and they just kept walking past us, crying, and it was very emotional. I think no one could have really written what happened to us, but um, yeah, it is difficult because your initial reaction on the pitch is like, I'm going to miss a World Cup, I'm going to miss the rest of the season. Um, and then eventually, obviously, after you get your scan, that's when you start processing, this is what's going to come. And you, Beth, had so much going in your life at that time away from football as well. How much of a distraction, maybe, what happened to you for that moment just took it away, considering what your mother was going through at that time as well? Yeah, that's always been my perspective, and I think 
no, it wasn't nice to do my ACL. Yes, I had the job that I love taken away from me for an extended thing, time, but my perspective straight away, I always believe things happen for a reason and maybe this was meant to happen. It didn't need to be a nine month injury, of course, but um, it gave me some special time with my mum and perspective is I will, co and I have come back from this injury. What my mum have, she couldn't come back from. So perspective wise, I think what we've had is nothing in comparison to what some people are going through. And I think that's a story that, that, that comes through in what happened to the two of you because well obviously you were dealing with it as well being being best girlfriend obviously like you you're kind of part of the family um i think especially once beth on her acl i felt really responsible for taking care of beth and being able to bring her home as much as i could um after you had done your your speed roll for home straight away that weekend to spend a bit of time with her mom and then obviously the plan was for for me to stay fit and to, yeah, to drive her home for Christmas. Um, but yeah, as, as Beth said, um, I decided to do it as well. And at least we got to spend a lot of time together. So um, yeah, it happened. And I think looking back on everything, like we're very grateful that I could be there for you and that she had that time at home to spend with her mom. In a way, did you have a reset moment, the pair of you? From the moment I wasn't allowed to do what I did anymore. I love football. My happy place away from family is playing football and doing what I love doing and I had that taken away from me in that time as well and I really struggled with that. Um, like when I'm angry or when I'm sad, I can go on the pitch and forget about all that for the training session or whatever it may be. And Yeah, I've, I love the game like I did when I was a six-year-old girl. Um, um, but I do think I, I needed that break in, in not playing a bit more than Beth did. Um, obviously, she had the best summer of her life in 2022. I picked up COVID straight after the first game at the Euro. So I think the lead up to me getting injured and, and missing that bit of football like hasn't been as straightforward as Beth had been. And um, obviously, again, like I'm a mum behind now when it comes to, to getting back to fitness. And you do start appreciating different things. and. Um, I think in the end, like it's just been a learning process for the both of us, really. Yeah. I mean, obviously, like we've both had complete different injuries and surgeries uh, to one another, and I think the thing that obviously, which I really struggled with, is I had my surgery the sixth of January, and then that same night on the seventh, like best mum passed away. So instead of me actually being able to focus on me recovering. It wasn't about me or my body at all. Like it was more about being there for Beth and obviously going up to Whitby as quickly yeah. as I could again after. So I think that first instance, the first six to eight weeks of recovery for me, where we're very much different to Beth's. And yeah, as she said, like I had to have a second surgery in in August, and uh, yeah, it, it was just very different. But I think not just us two, but I think with all the ACL girls, like we, we've done so well to keep each other positive yeah. and, and to help each other out. And, and that sometimes means that we're given tips. Other times it just means that we could cry all together or we could celebrate things together. And I think um, that's been really special throughout our rehab process, really. I think for us, the most beautiful thing about it was that anytime we needed anything, uh, everyone would be ready to help us out. And um, I think in the end it gave everyone a bit of extra motivation, like, okay, we've got girls sitting in the stands that really want to be on the pitch with us, but they can't, so let's go for them. And um, yeah, it's definitely brought the team closer together. I'm not saying that we need to go through this again, because we don't. <laughs> no. But no, nobody wants no, that. Exactly. <laughs> but no, it has been very special. And I mean, I think we always say that in every single thing that we do, interview we give, that we're just really thankful to all the girls standing by us throughout yeah. this period of time. In a crazy way, were, were there any fun bits to come out of it? Was the, did, were there any <laughs> sort of the, I know sense of humour gets tested in these situations, <laughs> but were there any lighter moments? We've had chance to go away um, a little bit more than we would have um, when playing football. and. We got a chance to go away with our families, so Viv's brother and his partner, my brother and his partner and my dad as well. And we had a holiday together and not often would we get a chance to do that and the timings would never be right. So it wasn't all doom and gloom. <laughs> the silliest moment, if there was a, the, the silliest moment. God. Or was there a list of silly moments? <laughs> oh, We're all looking at Viv. Yeah, I know. We've been, we've been hanging them. about with Laura a lot. She's yeah, very Laura's very... Clumsy. Clumsy, let's say. <laughs>
So she has always kept us entertained, to be <laughs> yeah. fair. We've not been bored. I mean, maybe Beth has, but I haven't. Um, we've kept ourselves busy, like, yeah. even in summer, like, obviously... To have a distraction from the World Cup and everything. We've been to Wimbledon. You've been to the Formula GP, One. So yeah, yeah, it's it's been it's been nice to be able to do other things. Um, Beth, Viv, thanks very much. <laughs>